Hi, my name is Brian Knight, and today I look forward to showing you how to build your first model-driven application. So stay tuned. If you've looked at some of my previous videos on Power Apps, you've seen how to build a Canvas application. And I'll put a link down below to building a Canvas application also. But model-driven applications are quite a bit different. They require the Plan 2, the P2 license for Power Apps, and they communicate mostly with the CDS, the Common Data Services. So there's no need to create a whole new database to connect to. Canvas applications are really geared at pixel-perfect kind of applications and can connect to hundreds and hundreds of different data sources. So if you open up make.powerapps.com, we're going to create a, one today that you can actually follow along with me. This will be a very simple application that communicates with an account entity. And what we want to do is we want to create an application for our sales folks to enter new accounts, customers, as well as the contacts for those, those customers. So let's take a look at the data model first. So what we're seeing here when I went to make.powerapps.com is a list of all the entities up top here that are built in to the CDS, Common Data Services. Now these entities you're seeing here are ones that are included out of the box, except for one that I've created here, but you can customize this also. Now today we're going to be messing mostly with the account entity and the contact entity right here. Now just note you can extend this however you wish as well to add your own. Now this video may be a bit longer, but ultimately once you know how to do this and you're not having me explain it to you, you'll be able to whip out these applications in just minutes. So there's a few things you want to start with first though. So first of all, let's go to the account entity. I got it here under data and entities at make.powerapps.com. I go to account, which is under, underneath that entities, and the entities equate to essentially a table, and fields equate to columns in that table. So they're trying to put more of an app kind of feel here in this case. It's so the whole slew of columns you're seeing right here on the top here. And we can actually add a new fields you want to, and you can customize the fields if you want to. But you'll also see things like relationships where an account might have an account owner, for example, uh, or might have products or opportunities they relate to. You'll see business rules where you can say, hey, when this account is created, they must have certain kind of fields or they must have these kind of uh, areas filled out before you can go, uh, before you can go somewhere else. Uh, so you can make certain things required here also. I typically use this for setting dates automatically. So if I, once I receive a certain product, I may want to go ahead and set the date of when I'm going to ship that product out to be two weeks after that, perhaps. That could be a business rule you create. And there's a business uh, rule engine inside this. Once you build the business rule here, and once you build your relationships and all these kind of things that you're seeing here, it will apply to Canvas applications and model-driven applications also. Under views and forms, these are how I'm going to view the record. First of all, list of all the records. These equate to galleries inside your Canvas application, where you'll see a list of records of active accounts, active contacts, and so on and so on. And we'll have a list of forms. This is where I can go and edit that customer or edit that contact. Lastly, you'll see dashboards and charts. Now these will uh, essentially, uh, just like it sounds, create dashboards and gadgets like that. I typically use Power BI to do that, that need because it's, it's a lot better uh, at visualization and gives you a lot more fine tooth control. Lastly, you'll see data here, and data gives you the ability to see the rows that are in here and so we can kind of play around before we actually build the application. But we are ready to build the application uh, now, so let's take a look at how we build that. So to do that, we'll go over to Create, and you'll see a model-driven application from scratch. The biggest difference here is we're not building a phone application or tab, but we're building a responsive application that works no matter what. So when we hit Create here, we'll give it a name like uh, Customer Acquisition, maybe, okay. And we can give it a name like a sales app for customer, for field service, for field people. I don't know, give it some name like that. We can check here if we want to allow uh, this to be allowed for offline capabilities. We can go ahead and change the, the tile here we want. We can add a welcome screen to kind of describe what this application does. But at this point, let's hit done. The first thing we're going to do though is we're going to, now that we built this, is we're going to build a site map. And a site map is, is guiding the customer around how do you navigate through the application and what screens are available and all that. So this is pretty simple. You'll see this little red X that we're seeing right here. I'll hit the pencil icon under that red X 
Okay, so so far, by the way, you can do everything I've done, you can do yourself in your environment if you have a P1 license or sorry, P1 license for the CDS, but now I need a P2 license to build this application. So P2 license of Power Apps. Uh, it's required for this. So everything I've done has not been customized. I have added a few records into that account entity just to kind of get things started. But beyond that, you can actually follow along and pause me along the way as you want to build this application. So let's go ahead now. I created a new site map and you're seeing area, group, and sub area. So the area is going to be up top and it's going to show what major area of the application am I doing. So this might be uh, the area, I'll call this just, uh, I'm going to keep the, the word, oops, I mean do that. I'm going to keep the word new area, but our area, excuse me. But I'll go ahead and just for the purpose of this video, we'll call this just uh, sales, sales uh, team. And then I'll put area just so you guys can kind of trace it back to what, what element this is. Under group, this is a group of all the entities that this application is going to have. So we'll go ahead here and hit the little pencil icon. All right, we'll call this just, I don't know, um, uh, pipeline or something like that. Okay, okay, I'll call this just group, just so we can kind of keep things tracked. And then lastly is our sub area. Now the sub area is a really the important one. That's what we've been, we've been working on. So areas up top, sub areas in the left panel, and then all of our, sorry, uh, pi, our groups in the sub is, is on the left panel, and then all the sub areas are gonna be underneath that. And our sub area might be, I wanna get a list of accounts, so I'll pick account. And then I also wanna get, I'm gonna hit the add button, and I'm gonna add a new sub area, and I'm gonna drag it right underneath there, so you have to put it right underneath there. This time I'll put it as a, how about contacts? Okay, there it is. Now we're essentially done. Now I can go into components, by the way, I, I added, I hit the add area, add uh, sub area right here, but you can also go to components and drag them over there as well. If I click drag, you'll see I can just kind of drop it right there and specify whatever you wish. I'll just point to, to some new, I don't know, I'll pick, uh, how about appointments? I don't know, whatever. Once I'm all done, I'll hit save and close. And now that warning sign has gone away. So essentially now I could save this, publish it, and then play. You'll see up here in the top left, top right here, I can save, validate to make sure things are working, publish it, and then play. And in that order, it would be, the app is ready to go. I can, I can hit the go button, and in a, what, maybe a minute and a half here, we have built an application from scratch. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? So that's the biggest advantage to building a model-driven application. So we built that MDA, model-driven application, in less than two minutes, really, uh, including my explanation. But now we're ready to go ahead and refine it and make it a little prettier. The first thing you'll notice here is we have three entities, account, appointment, and contact, the same three we added earlier. And we have forms and views and charts and dashboards in those entities. It's gonna show you all the forms, all the views, and so on for each of these entities. One thing I like to start with though is we have this business process engine right here. So I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna create a new business process and while it's hit loading a screen up, we'll talk about this. So I'll create this uh, Brian's Wicked Cool Process. All right. And this entity is gonna be for the account entity. And let's talk about what this is. So first of all, a, a business process is gonna open up the design you're seeing right here. And I'll, I'm gonna go full screen on this so you can kind of see what's, what's happening in this. This is where we're going to define the business process of how a record should be escorted from step to step to step. So let's imagine, for example, we have a recruiting slash HR application that's going to be responsible for bringing an employee from the recruiting stage all the way to, hey, you're on payroll, you're ready to go. So our business process might be, hey, I interviewed the employee. I have added the employee in, I interviewed them, I went ahead and had a phone call, I had the second interview, all right, now I'm on a second stage. The second stage is I've done my onboarding process, they had sexual harassment training, and so on and so on. The last stage is they've got their payroll paperwork all in, and so on and so on. So this is going to make sure that your business process is being followed every step along the way, and nobody's cheating. Okay, so they can also tie Microsoft Flow to it that says, hey, I went from HR's owning this, this record to now it's now finance record for payroll. And it can alert finance that they need to approve this process and get it going. So lots of cool stuff we can do with this. Let's do a basic one now. Just know that it can be a lot more elaborate and there's some gotchas in this application that we're gonna drive you batty. So uh, they're, I'm sure they're gonna fix it, but just note it's a little bit weird in some areas. Where you're gonna find it's weird is as you go through and name these things, 
and I always forget this. So it's one of those things, it's always gonna be a gotcha here. So if I go through and I name this uh, whatever, here I'll call this first stage um, customer acquisition. Acquisition, whatever. Oh, I can't spell today. Okay, there we go. All right, if I were to go somewhere else now, you'll notice it still says new stage. So if I were to go through and I create a new stage here, notice how it's kind of weird here also? It's kind of be really fickle there how it does it. If I click on that plus button, it puts a new stage in. Now I've essentially lost that change I made. So you need to make sure in the UI that you're going through and saying, you know, customer acquisition, maybe the spell better at that time, and hit apply, and then it shows customer acquisition here. So make sure you hit the apply button. Oh, the apply button, by the way, let me get rid of me here. That apply button is right in the bottom right behind me, behind my, my ugly mug that you saw before. So just note, it's a big gotcha that you'll have to make over and over again. Okay, so let me go ahead and say, what do I want to acquire before I can go to the next stage? Well, they have these things called data steps, and these are fields that must be, must be added before you can go to the next stage. So to, for me, I want to see certain fields that are available. So let's go through and actually create that. I'm gonna get rid of my face here so you can kind of see the full, full area. I want, as I acquire this, let's get, make sure we get the, a, um, uh, how about the city the customer's in? I can make that required perhaps, so I can go and route that lead to the right rep. When I hit apply, you'll see it says account address one city down there. Again, you can hit the plus button and see it's, I, I always find myself going to components and just dragging it over because it's so picky there. I wanna know how many employees this customer has. All right, so let's go and find that out. Hit the drop down box, I'm gonna look for number of employees. There we go, okay. That's gonna be some an HR company perhaps, this is gonna be a, a big critical thing, make sure you hit apply and then you're off to the races. So now I have two columns that are needed for me to go to the next stage. And my next stage, I wanna branch this point. If they've got a thousand employees, I wanna give them special, concern, special concerns around that. If they have less than a thousand employees, I'm gonna fast track them down the path. So let's get rid of my head again and look at how we can do this. So I'm gonna do this through a condition. Again, you'll find components right here. I'm gonna drag conditions where you see the plus button right there, okay? So what I wanna see is I'll create this condition called uh, big account. All right. And I want to say that, hey, if you've got a large amount of employees, you are probably uh, going to get some special love here. So I'm going to go over to number of employees, and I want to make sure that it is greater, or sorry, less than, all right, less than the value of, I'll call it 100. All right, if you have 100 employees, you're going to go, I'm going to hit apply. You're gonna go this right path here, go to right the next stage. If you have more than 100 employees, you're gonna go to the red X here. So I'm gonna go over to components, I'm gonna drag a stage right underneath that red X, and I'll call this one, this stage will be called Extra Love. Okay, there's already a detail, I'm gonna hit apply, I always forget that. There'll be a detail step right underneath here, and the extra love I wanna give you is I want to make sure that I know, I don't know, let's put, um, uh, your primary contact name, whatever, and I'll hit apply. Okay, so, and if you, and that can be whatever you want, of course. Now on this side, my last step here, I'll just pick a random field here from this step right here that says I wanna get the rating of the employee, employer, there we go. All right, so we have our basic model now created. We had to make sure you hit apply before you do any of this. So all these should ha not have, uh, should have field names underneath it. They don't, you gotta get some, some work to do. All right, with that now done, I have the new stage here. I should have given it a better name. I'll just put finalize account, something like that, and I'll hit apply. Okay, so now I have it all, all laid out. With that now done, I'm gonna hit the save button up top. I'm gonna validate to make sure that everything looks good. I got one error, and what we're seeing here is it looks like, oh, let me see. Okay. It looks like I forgot, I forgot to hit the apply button. I told you, right? I told you I was gonna do it, I did it. So let's go ahead and I'll do rating again and hit the apply button. All right, luckily it catches that. And so I hit save and then validate. We'll see step by step what's going to happen. Let's say validate, looks like it's working, all right? And it says right here, validate successfully. Then I'm going to turn it on by hitting the activate button. Now this activate might take it a few seconds to do once I hit the activate button, uh, but now my business process is ready to roll. So with that now done, we can go back to our previous screen. I can go ahead and close this out. All right. And I can, hit, I can uncheck all and say, I just want Brian's wicked cool process. 
All right. Now we can also go through under views, for example, and say, no, I don't want to show all the views. I only want them to be able to see the active accounts, for example. And their form, same thing. I only want them to see that that one as well. So you can get very, very picky about how you're, how you're showing this. In my case, we're just going to show maybe the main form here for, um, I'll keep it at, oops. Oh, that show at least one form. Uh, I'll pick this one right here, a form for an SMT. I'll go ahead and pick the uh, default form here. I can hit the little gearbox or the little uh, pencil icon to actually edit that form, and we'll do one of those in a moment also. Let's save this off. All right, we'll go ahead then and publish this. And then lastly, we're going to play this and watch our application be built now. So now we're seeing a list of accounts. Oh, this is uh, the wrong view, as you can see. I want to see active accounts. And we can uncheck that other view to make sure they don't even see that, they have the option to see that. But now we're seeing a list of active accounts. If I were to create a new record, they're seeing Brian Wicked, Wicked Cool process right here. Let's go ahead and call this um, uh, Hadoop Corp. Okay, we can put whatever information we want there. I'll go ahead and save this. Now check this out. Now we're seeing, oh, I forgot to give it a name, new stage. All right, now if I go through and I put number of employees, and now notice number of employees is not on this form right now. Actually, it's right here, it looks like. Let me go ahead and do that. I'll put, uh, we had 50 employees or five employees. When I hit save, or click outside, there we go. Uh, when, I, when, I, when we're looking at this record now, notice that we see the normal processes right here. We have three flows here. If I were to say there's 5,000 employees now and click away from it and save this, uh, we'll see it actually injects the extra love step now in place. If I go to customer acquisition, it's asking for, all right, I want to see a city. All right, it's going to be Green Cove Springs. There we go. Hit next, and now we're moving to the next stage. Extra love is gonna be the contact name, next stage, and so on and so on until we get through the process right here. We hit finish, we are finished with our business process. So let me show you a few more things here, and that's, I'll start with how about the view that you're seeing right here. Well, this view can be modified, again, back over here, and if I go back to da the data entities here, and we go back to account, we can see a list of all the entities, and in my case, I'm gonna go to view, and our uh, default view was, I forgot which one we're showing here, active accounts. They're all um, in here, active accounts right here. I'm gonna hit that little buy icon right here, and we're gonna edit this view now. So the cool thing about model-driven applications, if we make changes to the entity, it's gonna apply to all applications using that entity also, which is pretty darn slick. So if we look at here, we're seeing what kind of records are gonna be shown. Let's go ahead and look for our number of employees, all right? There we go, number of employees. I'll drag that over. And now when I save this and publish it, once I go back to that model-driven application again, we're going to see that that new, here's a view that looks like that right now. We hit refresh. Oh, I mean hit refresh the whole application here. We're going to see number of app and employees right here in our in our midst as well. So any changes we make to this view and to the uh, form view are going to show immediately for all the applications using it. So this is a basic application uh, that we built in under five minutes, really, ultimately. Now, we could have built this application in just a few seconds. Once we hit that sitemap and we hit publish, it is ready to roll. So if you have to do those, you're going to find out that these, these will work really fast. One more thing I just want to show you. You'll notice up top here in our application, we see sales team and there's our area. Then we have pipeline groups. Again, I don't have to put the word groups in here. That was only so you can kind of relate to it. And here's all of our entities right here with their, with their uh, icons and all that. So these are our sub areas that we picked earlier also. So all of those map very, very easily and you can build these applications wicked fast. Well, this is part of our class at Pragmatic Works. We have a, a, a series of Power Apps classes and the rest of the Power Platform also. 50 total classes that are available on our on-demand platform. If you're interested in training, please reach out to us at pragmaticworks.com. I'm B Knight at pragmaticworks.com. We also have the ability, by the way, to build applications for you. We are passionate about building applications for you. And uh, reach out to us if that interests you as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll get deeper into the model-driven application world in a future video. But in this video, I just wanted to kind of give you the basics in just a few minutes of how to build these applications. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.